Hi, so what do we mean by expressing a fraction in partial fractions? Well, before I answer this, let me take you back to adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. If we had, say, for instance, this problem here, 3 divided by x plus 2 minus 4 divided by 2x minus 1, and we're asked to simplify this, we'd first of all need to select a lowest common multiple which would be x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. And we would write this as being identical to, and we would have our lowest common multiple in the denominator here as x plus 2 multiplied with 2x minus 1. And we would say, what do we multiply the x plus 2 by to get this fraction here? with this denominator, well, it's got to be 2x minus 1. And we'd multiply the top, the 3, with 2x minus 1. So I'd have 3 times 2x minus 1. And then we'd have the minus there. And we'd go through the same process again. What do you multiply the 2x minus 1 by to give me this denominator? And it would be the x plus 2. So we have to multiply the top with x plus 2. And when you simplify this, what you end up with is that this is identical to 2x minus 11 all divided by x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Now, if I was asked to express this fraction here in partial fractions, the answer would be what we have here, 3 over x plus 2 minus 4 divided by 2x minus 1. So partial fractions is about breaking this up into its original fractions. Notice that each of these factors in the denominator here appears in each of the individual fractions up here. And these types of factors here are called linear factors. Let's just write that in. They have the form ax plus b, where a and b are constants. You can see in this one we've got 1x plus 2. So a would be 1 and the b would be 2. And this one here, 2x minus 1, the a would be the 2 and the b would be minus 1. Now it's important when it comes to working with partial fractions that we're able to understand the type of factors that we've got in the denominator. Now for example, suppose we were asked to express the following in partial fractions. Let's say we had the fraction 3x plus 2 divided by, say, x plus 3 multiplied with, I have another factor here, 5x minus 1. Now do you notice that both these factors here have this form, ax plus b, they're linear factors then. And if we were to break this up into partial fractions, then the partial fractions would be something like this, where in the numerator we've got constants, the 3 and the 4 in this example. So this would come from a similar kind of pattern structure. It would have a constant, which I'll call A. You can use any letter you like, but uh, A seems to be fairly sensible. And this would be divided by the first linear factor, x plus 3. And then to this, we would add another constant, let's say b, and this would be divided by the other linear factor, 5x minus 1. And then we would go on to work out what a and b were. And I'll show you how to work out the constants a and b in a later video in this series. Now in this next example here, you can see that it differs a bit from the one up here. First of all, we've got three fractions, and you'll notice that in the denominators here, we've got a linear factor, and we've got a linear factor here. But it's this factor which appears to be different. Well, let's just take you through this first of all, and we'll see how this falls out. And we would say this is identical then, and set up our fraction. We're looking for the lowest common multiple of these denominators here. And what it would be would be x minus 2 all squared times 2x plus 5. 
So if I just put that in here as x minus 2 all squared times 2x plus 5. Now, if we just run through this very quickly, we'd say, what do we multiply x minus 2 by? To get this denominator, well, it's going to be another x minus 2 times 2x plus 5. So I'd multiply the 4 with the x minus 2 and another 2x plus 5. Then for this fraction here, what do we multiply x minus 2 all squared with to get this denominator? Well, it's just going to be the 2x plus 5. So we multiply that 2 with 2x plus 5. And finally, for the last fraction, the 2x plus 5 here is multiplied by x minus 2 all squared to get this denominator. So we just multiply the 3 with the x minus 2 all squared. Now, if you were to simplify this, you would find that the top comes to 11x squared minus 12x minus 38. And it'll all be divided then by x minus 2 all squared times 2x plus 5. So again, if we were asked to express this fraction in partial fractions, the answer would be these three fractions here. Now what we've got here is the linear factor 2x plus 5. So we had that in the previous example and it gave rise to a constant divided by that linear factor. But notice how this factor here, x minus 2 all squared, appears in our answer here. This factor here, x minus 2 all squared, is referred to as what we call a repeated linear factor. And you can see that what we get is a constant over just x minus 2, and then we get another constant over that factor repeated, and this time it's squared. So it is important to realize what type of factors you've got in the denominator here as it affects the kind of partial fractions that you get here in your answer. So for instance then, just following this on, if I was to take 2x plus 1 divided by, let's say, 3x minus 2 all squared, and we're asked to express this in partial fractions, well, what we've got here is a repeated linear factor. So the partial fractions would be of the form a constant, let's say a, divided by 3x minus 2. And then to this we would add another constant, b say, divided by 3x minus 2 all squared. And if I had, for instance, 5x minus 1 divided by, say, bit more in the denominator this time. Let's say we have x minus 2 multiplied with, say, 2x plus 1 all squared. Then what would this give rise to in terms of partial fractions? Well, x minus 2 is a linear factor, so that would be a constant, let's say a, then, divided by x minus 2. And then we'd have the 2x plus 1 all squared. This is a repeated factor, so we handle it like we did up here. But only this time, the next constant we'll use is b, and we'll put that over 2x plus 1. And then we have another constant, which we'll introduce as, say, c. And that's divided by 2x plus 1, but this time it's all squared. Now, in any of these examples, we need to work out what the constants a, b, and c are. And so a, b, and c are constants to be found. And in a later video, I'll show you how we go about finding those constants a, b, and c. And in the next video that follows, I've just got a quick test on what we've just been talking about here, which I certainly encourage you to try. It won't take that long to do, but it's about expressing fractions then, impartial fractions, just using constants a, b, and c, and so on. Okay? So do try that, and uh, 
Hopefully you'll carry on with the other videos in this series then on partial fractions.